interrogation team on its way to question bombing suspect Johar Sarnaev, but so far the 19-year-old is unable to communicate. But there are questions being raised about how Sarnaev, a naturalized U.S. citizen, should be handled and whether he should be read his Miranda rights. Senator Dianne Feinstein, the chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, says Sarnaev should not be treated as an enemy combatant, as some lawmakers have suggested. I think there's going to be a great deal of evidence put together to be able to convict him, and it should likely be a death penalty case under federal law. I believe that the federal competence in doing this at this time is extraordinary. Feinstein appeared on Fox News Sunday. Another big story that was somewhat overshadowed by the events here in Boston was that explosion at a fertilizer plant in Texas on Wednesday. Fourteen people were killed and more than 200 were injured. Some of the dozens of homeowners who had damaged property are being allowed back in for a short time. ABC's Steve Osinsami was at the scene in West Texas. Authorities are allowing only some residents to see their homes. We're very, very fortunate. And, um a lot of people have lost everything. They're still worried about broken gas pipes or pipes connected to the plant causing another deadly explosion. Federal investigators are here. They still haven't shared what they think caused the depot to blow. Folks in the town are trying to carry on as best they can. A church held its Sunday worship service in a hayfield today because its building was blocked off. Israel continues to be on the forefront of military technology. A high-ranking Air Force officer says his country is developing drones that can execute nearly every battlefield operation performed today by piloted aircraft. He also tells the Associated Press Israel is looking to develop optical satellites for military use. He refused to say whether Israel's drones are capable right now of firing missiles, despite eyewitness accounts from the Gaza Strip by people who said they saw the small crafts shooting missiles. There is another race today in Tallahassee, Florida. It's a fundraiser where runners will symbolically go the final 5.2 miles of the Boston Marathon in a gesture of support for those who were stopped in Boston following the bombing. Shannon Colvecchio organized the run and says all proceeds will go to the Red Cross. It's a good thing to want to come together and just, you know, do something to help these families. And so we are really hoping to raise as much money as we possibly can. WBZ Newstime, 252. A tear in the tarp that covers the boat. Moments ago, an armored vehicle moved through the crowd. 19-year-old suspect is in custody tonight. Thank God we got well, On behalf of Crystal and Martin and Lindsay, the MIT officer and the police officer, I want to say how grateful I am. This is WBZ WBC News Time 253, traffic and weather together. The Subaru dealers of New England all will drive traffic on the freeze. What's going on, Don Boudreaux? A little slow on the lower deck of 93 crossing the Sagan Bridge into the O'Neill Tunnel. That's because of a right lane restriction inside the Callahan Tunnel. The van pole repair is going to be there. Fast Pike East ramp to Copley Square will be reopening shortly. However, other streets around Copley Square, including Boyle and remain closed till further notice. The Sumner and Ted Williams tunnels are okay. Topin Bridge is fine. Lever connector looks good. Expressway North, that's on the brakes from Savin Hill to Columbia Road. Southbound side's okay to the split. Route 3 is doing well along the south shore. 2495 are fine to and from Rhode Island. No problems on the Mass Pike on the Stir Bridge and back to some light volume on routes 2 and 9. To the north, 393 95, all clear to and from New Hampshire. One moves well between Chelsea and Danvers. No problems at either end of 128 or 495. Next report at 303 on WBZ's traffic on the threes. WBZ News Time 254. And now the four day WBZ AccuWeather forecast. Here's meteorologist Brian Thompson. A very sunny afternoon on the way, but it's still going to be cool. A high only around 50, and another chilly night tonight under a mainly clear sky. Low 31 in many suburbs to 37 downtown. Early tomorrow morning, it's going to be chilly, and even throughout the day, the gusty east wind develops, it's still going to be a cool high only 51. But then feeling colder with that wind. I wonder if it's much sun tomorrow, and we more clouds to deal with. And Tuesday will likely turn out cloudy as the storm comes up the coast, and that will likely lead to some on and off rain and drizzle. Tuesday's high just 46 in that rain, and milder on Wednesday. Clouds and a few breaks of sunshine. And a high near 60. I'm back here with the meteorologist Brian Thompson, WEZ News Radio 1030. And right now we have 52 degrees at 254 in Boston. This is Neil Chaya, looking at the wall.
If they call you a rat, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Peter and Paul, who definitely didn't take after their biblical namesakes, decided to pull off a home invasion and run. But things didn't go well and both were sent to prison. The Telegraph newspaper then published a report that Paul had decided to cooperate with the authorities and testify against Peter to cut a better deal. It turned out this wasn't true, and Paul had not turned on his partner in crime, and Paul sued for defamation, arguing that informants had held an even lower scene than criminals, and the public would consider him a tattletale, a snitch, and basically a rat, the lowest form of life. But the court dismissed his case, stating that while some elements in our society would look unkindly with authorities, the prevailing view among law-abiding citizens is that such conduct reflects good moral character and respect for the rule of law. So if someone calls you a rat, say thank you and ask for the chief. This is me, your chair, looking for podcast. Go to cbsboston.com. WBZ News Time 256. And a few program notes. WBZ and our sister stations, our sister CBS stations, will join other Boston radio stations tomorrow in a moment of silence for the marathon bombing victims. The 60-second tribute will air from 2.50 p.m. That's exactly one week after the first bomb went off on Boylston Street. So a moment of silence tomorrow on uh, all Boston radio stations, including all the CBS radio stations and WBZ here in Boston. That will be at 2.50 Monday afternoon, the exact moment those bombs went off. And WBZ wants you to know about the One Fund Boston.org that's been organized to help the people affected by the tragic events at the Boston Marathon. You can donate by going to OneFundBoston.org. And please give what you can, because CBS Boston can. And don't forget 60 Minutes tonight at 7 o'clock right here on WBZ News Radio. You can hear it uh, anywhere you are from your radio. You don't need to be by television. 60 Minutes tonight at 7 on WBZ News Radio 1030. Right now, it's 52 degrees under sunny skies in Boston. It'll be mainly clear and chilly overnight, breezy and cool tomorrow with times of clouds and sun. Tomorrow's high luck today, about 51 degrees. Mean agreement. It has come to my attention that some of you have yet to try Borowski's organic bread. Shocking. In this day and age, with the sophistication of American taste bud at an all-time high, we have toast lovers, sandwich lovers, bread and butter baker pays out there who have yet to stumble. They to include to the utmost the classic taste of Borowski's organic bread. With its maximum old world flavor, hearty texture, and wholesome certified organic goodness, organic as in organically grown whole grains. No pesticides, nothing artificial, nearly the big change. Borowski's organic sets the standard. Raisins, the standard. A white taste, sophisticated baked goods of the season, and all around the room, donuts. So come on, gang, life is short. Let's get cracking. Borowski's organic breads, rolls, English muffins.